Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabados of Delmar, and we have two very special guests with us today. First to my left, and I guess to the screen to the right, is Nechama Labor. She's the JGU, which stands for the Jewish Global Girls. Girls. The United. Jewish g g g Global. Global, you're the global director. That's the bottom line. Yeah. And we have next to her Susan Axelrod, and you are the global strategist strategy strategy advisor. advisor. All right, I Jewish got the Girls titles United. right. Now we can talk. Yes. We got the titles mm -hmm. all correct. Listen, you have a long history here in the Capital District, and you've been <clears> doing a lot of projects, mainly like we just said, you're working with girls. That's your major forte. And uh, tell us about what you're doing with girls with your um, JGU. All right, so Jewish Girls Unite is an online movement, a global community for Jewish girls. We have online programs, classes, contests, and all different ways of connecting our girls and empowering them to express themselves and use their creativity to light up the world. Well, you know, you used uh, global <coughs> in your title. I mean, again, I know that you're in the, obviously in the capital district here, but um, what is the global part of it? So since Susan is our global strategy, that's yes. her, her <laughs> question. All right. Our vision is connecting girls around the world with each other in a safe online platform. So we use technology to connect girls literally from around the globe. So we have some classes and workshops online that are in the evening. But we have, for example, one class on a Sunday afternoon, which allows girls in Europe or, or Israel to come online in real time and be with us participating in our workshops and programs. We also offer blogs and various writing opportunities and engagement opportunities online, which is what allows us to have a global presence. You know, it's interesting. The Lubavitch Rebbe always talked about using communications. I mean, I'm, I always say I'm 29 years old, but <clears throat> in the olden times, you wouldn't be able to do these kind of things online. And here we're using modern technology in order to connect. This is the most unifying technology that you can have. And never a exactly. hundred years ago was unheard of totally. Exactly. And even <clears throat> 20, 30 years ago, you know, you'd, ha you'd have a television like here. It would be a very limited. And here, it goes all over the world. Exactly. You know, now come and tell us other things. I know you have a camp. That's an important uh, part of the institution of the Capital District. Right, exactly. So <clears throat> it actually all started with the Jewish Girls Retreat back in 2014. Yeah. And it was four. 2004. Yeah. Yes, thank you. 2004. Wow. Time flies. Um, yes, yes, time flies. I was <laughs> just yeah. going to say that. Yeah. So um, basically we wanted to have a way to engage the girls and, and carry on the inspiration from the summer retreats. Now who, where are the girls coming from? Again, Capital District? Or? They're coming from all over the world. All right. So this is... You name it. This <laughs> is, a, this is a, a camp, a summer camp, and yet still the girls have come from as far away as France and Sweden. They've come from Israel. They have counselors that come from different parts of the country as well. And many of the campers do come from around the United States. So again, there's a global orientation, but this was the seed that was planted over many years, which allowed Nechama and, and I came together with her to grow into something bigger. Right, excellent. You know, we have, if people can see on the screen for sure, our viewers, that you have a few books here. So why don't you tell us the history and what the books are all about? Okay, so one of our missions is to empower our girls to and create a safe space where they can express themselves and their love for Judaism. <clears throat> so what's the first mitzvah that a Jewish girl does from the time she's three years old is light a Shabbos candle. That's the spark that ignites her soul. And so going way back to my own childhood and watching my own mother light her Shabbos candles, I developed my own love for Shabbos and I wanted to impart this to our Jewish daughters all over the world. And so I learned from my Rebbe, <coughs> the Lubavitcher Rebbe, in, from his candle lighting campaign in 1974. 
It was launched to encourage all women and girls to light Shabbos candles from as young as three years old. And actually, as young as a child can speak and recite the blessing. Yeah, sometimes it's earlier. So even earlier, if a child is capable. And, and this was unheard of in those days. People called it, this was in the dark ages before Jewish girls <laughs> lit Shabbos candles. And they just watched their mother's light. But the Rebbe's attitude was that Jewish women, we have a candle of our own. We have our own light to shine in the world. And as the world becomes spiritually darker, it's, the solution is the light of a Jewish girl's candle. And so being that I was inspired by this, I spoke to Susan and I said, how can we really you know, carry this message through the JGU platform? So I went back to the history of the Nesha campaign, which is the name for the candle lighting campaign instituted by the Lubavitcher Rebbe. What does it stand for and Neshek word? stands for Nerot Shabbat Kodesh. Nun Shin Kuf, I repeat, is Nerot Shabbat Kodesh, which means candle lighting, the, whole, the candles of Shabbat. Now, another term for Neshek in Hebrew means weapons. And the idea is that what is a Jewish woman, women, woman's weapon? It's her light. This is how we fight the darkness. It's just by increasing the light. So, going back to follow... Yeah, just to add one little thing to come. Here's one little uh, candle. And uh, just, you know, you know, the result is incredible. That's what you were saying. But the action is literally pennies. You know, you can get a little candle. You don't need a golden candelabra. You get, you know, and I'm sure you would be able to give them if anybody wants to contact you. Uh, they see your name and number on the email on the screen. You can get for free candles or a nickel apiece. And uh, the action takes a minute or two. But like you're just saying, it's on one hand, it's not, we're not asking for a monetary donation. You're not asking for a big expense and not even a time expense. But like you're saying, the, the ramifications of the results of right. these candles are incredible. Quite the contrary, in fact. Not only do we not ask for a monetary donation for this purpose, but instead we make an offering to people. And so I've learned this through my friendship and relationship with Nahama and through our Jewish daughters, that this that we actually offer you an opportunity for inspiration in that moment when you light the Shabbos candles. And this is how we created the connection, if you want to show them our book, from this first book that was so, written in <coughs> the 1970s. So let's just tell them about this book. Mm -hmm. So in the 1970s, the Rebbe encouraged Mrs. Esther Sternberg to compile the writings and the thoughts of Jewish girls on candle lighting to compile it into this book called A Candle of My Own, being that every Jewish girl should have her own candle. And this would inspire educators and mothers to light Shabbos candles with their, with their daughters because they, they would read about how much a Jewish girl loves this mitzvah. Now, um, <clears throat> ironically, this is me when I'm five years old. <laughs> and I remember you know, being photographed by a professional photographer. I had no idea that it would be used in this very special book that was published in 1979. Fast forward 36 years later, we have the JGU platform, and we said, let's use this to create a space for Jewish girls to express their love for candle lighting, using the power of words. And so <clears throat> we approached the head of the Nesha candle lighting campaign. Her name is Mrs. Sternberg. She well, you know, she followed the direction of the Rebbe and to produce a second book. And we told her we want to continue the Rebbe's vision and support her work and produce, and produce a book. But it all started with, with another contest, a writing contest about Shabbos candles back in 2015 was what when was we launched it. What was the question? It was, um, what does Shabbos candles mean to you? And you can write an essay, a story. It was only story. for young girls? I mean, it was as young as five years old. Whoever can write. And the Rebbe actually girls. encouraged that. He wanted that, the, the expressions of young girls because that, that's what touches people. 
And so here we have, fast forward, um, we just launched this on March 1st, the third candle lighting book, and we called it One More Light. And this is the mission of our generation, to encourage every Jewish girl to shine her one more light, and then for each girl to ignite one more light and continue this chain. You know, Nechama, you know, a lot of questions we get as a rabbi is, you know, Judaism, especially Orthodox Judaism, is very male-oriented. And, uh, you know, oh, you get to be the, get an aliyah, you get the bar mitzvah, the big bang, and, you know, Orthodox, and the girls are, they asked, well, we're secondary citizens. I said, listen, this is the major answer to this is that those Shabbos candles are very, very, very special, and they're given to not only women, but to little girls, and that really weighs, say everybody's equal, different, but equal, and even certain times the rubber brought out their women, if I might say, are even superior in a lot of senses, so people just should keep that in mind, that here's something specifically exactly. for girls, it's not like, all right, girls and boys, you know, you're equal. No, no, it's, this is for girls, and uh, the young boys do not like the job as candles. So we agree. <laughs> we agree. Got it. And that, and that I, I want to, again, use the word inspiration. And this is so important, is that this year, exactly right, it is an opportunity for inspiration for our young girls. So built into this book, in addition to the essays and writings, poetry, essays, writings by our young girls, we also have some writings by women, but we also have inspiration in woven in throughout the book. It's a beautiful, full color. Every page is color. It's like going through a piece of artwork. Just it was locally, just to put in a shout out, who to just tell us who uh, typeset it. Yeah. Go ahead. So part of our history is that we work together with Leah Karras for over 14 years and she was a camper at the Jewish Girls Retreat at, when she was 14 years old. Ever since then we've been working together. She had a magazine called Yalda and Yalda basically has merged with JGR to create the organization called Jewish Girls Unite. So we're continuing that mission, continuing the inspiration of the summer camps to create this global movement for all Jewish girls, even those who may not be able to come to our camp. They can just click the link online and join us and get inspired and share their inspiration. We just had last Sunday an online celebration as part of our creative online clubs where we celebrated the life of Miriam and Jewish girls danced online, they sang for each other Tambourines. and used their talents <laughs> to light up the world and share their own candle. So Leia so. designed the book. So now Leia designed exactly. our website. Yes. And so we really do work in partnership, but it's such a rich history, again, woven through this relationship right. that we're still working with her today. And our team has only grown. We have many capable women and girls who are part of the Jewish Girls Unite global leadership team. Uh, it's important. I think it's very, very important what you're saying is sometimes, again, you tell people what to do, but then they, you make them feel like they're part of it also. Hey, I have inspiration. Just it's important to know. I mean, I've been around a number of years also, and, you know, you invite, all right, light a candle, come on over Friday night. And, of course, we light candles, all right. And many people have become totally just, again, that's why I try to emphasize that, again, it's a small action, you know, what's lighting a candle, and it's a small cost, and really the ramifications people have turned down. They literally lit up their lives. I'll tell you even a little thing that the truth of the matter is that I said it's only for women. It's really even not true. And the Lubavitcher Rebbe once brought that out also. Really, let's, for example, like a single man, let's say by myself, my wife goes into convention and I'm all sitting by myself. Say, so, well, no candles, no woman, no candles. That's not true. That the man should light candles if, again, if there's no woman. So here's a man and a woman equally, but the woman gets precedent over the woman and any right. the, the, the man. And sometimes I am in that situation, so I says, all right, that's the law, so of course I do it. 
and it really is incredible. You know, I just light candles. I said, wow, this is really something very it's, special it is. It's by amazing. doing that. Yeah, and I says, great. you know, a little bit, you feel jealous. This is an incredible oh, thing that you feel by lighting story. candles. So sometimes men yeah. do light candles. I always say that that's important because you have uh, young students that's come it. from college and they, uh, in college at SUNY Albany or around here. And, you know, oh, we, I had with my get friends, my boyfriends, and we had Friday night. They don't want to come over. So you light candles? No, my mother lights in Long Island. <laughs> for sure. I says, her, your mother in Long Island doesn't right. help you in Albany. That's so right. I think that's another footnote. But again, to emphasize women, if there's a man and woman together, yeah. then the woman gets the, the first choice. Yeah, one of our built into the platform of what we do, built into our personal uh, mission, is to help our Jewish daughters become Jewish mothers. Now, of course, we realize every woman does not give birth. We understand that. Um, but you can still be a Jewish mother. Hopefully, you'll be able to give birth. And if not, you're still a Jewish mother for all the other Jewish girls in the world. There's girls who are lonely. There are girls who need help and support. And so this is part of the learning uh, that we offer. We do have a very special story I want to ask you to you share. Know, just, to, uh, just before you start, to, you know, that was a beautiful thing because, I mean, again, Rabbi and I, yeah, I'm obviously always mm -hmm. talking to people who are not really trying to get them into Judaism. But, you know, like you get w older women and they say, I can't have children. I'm, you know, I'm uh, past that age already. And what's Jewish womanhood and motherhood yeah, tell them to call for us. me? <laughs> so, no, I never heard that. That's a beautiful way of putting it, that they're still, you know, you're still in a certain sense a mother, even though maybe biologically, yes. you know, a lot of women can't. But, in, uh, you know, even if they're young, some people can't. There's unfortunate cases like that. But, I mean, in any case, that's a very beautiful way to put it. So. Yeah. Tell us about the special uh, essay in your book. Okay. Now. So one of the there are very you know many submissions in here that are all beautifully written. One of them was uh, was discovered um, during you want to find it during a very very um, tragic time in Australia. I had heard about this attack that had taken the, li the life of a young girl, Is age 10. It was, um, a criminal rammed his vehicle into pedestrians in the, in the heart of Melbourne, not Australia. Not terrorist, not that way. Right, so basically I had heard about this from my relatives in Australia and it had shooken me because here's a young Jewish girl and I just, I felt it. And a couple days later, we were going through the contents of the book and Susan said, that's it. You got to close the book. We're not adding any more submissions. I said, you know what? I got to just check every single email. Perhaps I missed, I missed something. Right. So I'm going through this, and suddenly I notice an email from Australia from the Beth Rifka College with an attachment that had never been opened. I click it open, and there on my screen, I see a handwritten poem with the most beautiful words written by Talia Haken of blessed memory. She was killed in this car accident. This girl who had ago, been killed. Just months before she wrote so, it. I mean, no, so let me explain. Okay, so I look ahead. at the date of the email and it's September 2015. This was just a few months ago, two months ago when we were just completing the book. Somehow her poem was waiting to appear at that moment to provide words of hope and light at a very tragic time. And so right away we contacted the family in Australia and it was published on the front cover of the Australian Jewish newspaper that Friday. And the words of her poem, when you light up a candle, you light up your neshama and you light up the world. Those are the first three sentences. We have dedicated a very special page. It's called The Legacy of Light to Talia Haken. A very dear friend and, mu and musician and singer by the name of Rifka Leah Silich was so moved that she set this poem to a melody. And then she contacted Sam Glazer, a world-renowned singer who produced this song for us it, with the most beautiful, beautiful, just 
arrangement. And so today we have Talia's words to share with the entire world. And our message is that yes, there is darkness. Everybody goes through dark times. But as Jewish women and girls, we provide the light. We can always light that candle. Oops. And so this is the candle that has illuminated the world with the words of Talia, words of hope, and that one day, she says, the world is dark but soon to be bright. And here we have for you a music video sharing the story with the melody and the song. When you light up a candle, you light up your neshama and you light up the world. And when you light up the world, you make it a better place, like for you, me, and everybody. Now the world, the world is dark. But soon it will be bright for us. Imir Tzashem Mashiach will come. Now the world, the world is dark. But soon it will be bright for us. Imir Tzashem Mashiach will come. When you light up a candle, you light up your neshama and you light. Up the world, and when you light up the world, you make it a better place, like for you, you, me, and everybody. Now the world, the world is dark, but soon it will be bright for us. In your Hashem, Mashiach will come. Now the world, the world is dark, but soon it will be bright for us. The Mirz Hashem Mashiach will come.
that was very inspiring to Hama, and it's, it's on one hand it's tragic to say the very least a young Jewish girl should be killed like this. On the other hand, it's she has a legacy, and if some people don't have legacies. They live till ninety, a hundred years old, and they have nothing to share with the yep. world. Exactly. And here is a young uh, girl exactly. that has so much to share with. Her exactly, her. and really the whole idea of Shabbos candle lighting is legacy because we are carrying on the legacy of Sarah Imenu. She has passed this on to us, and every Jewish woman, she's the one that will pass on the flame of Judaism from generation to generation. We want every girl to realize the power that she has, that it's, it's, we're depending on her to carry on our precious legacy. And do you know that Talia's name was Sarah? This was her Hebrew name. Talia's her name. So from Sarah, our mother, to Sarah, we will pass on this legacy to every single Jewish girl around the world and it's very easy for them to reach us and find each other and support each other to grow their in their love for Hashem. And before we end, I, I do want yes. to make a very important point. Right. Our work crosses boundaries. Yes. It crosses barriers. It crosses distinctions. And so we really represent unity of all Jewish girls everywhere across the denominations, across the divides that sometimes we create for ourselves. Nechama and I, our partnership, I grew up in the conservative Jewish movement. Nechama grew up in Chabad. And so we are actually representative of an ability to focus on what unites us and right. in love and for our Jewish daughters and support of bringing them together. So our focus is this unity that has created the most amazing community of girls and women coming together, supporting each other, regardless of background. You know, it's, a, it's just a beautiful point because, um, again, we're quoting the Rebbe constantly, who's our inspiration, our total inspiration. And again, it did Rebbe didn't like Orthodox, conservative, and here also you're just removing all boundaries. We're not looking if you're religious, you're not religious, and like that. And even older and younger, it's that's almost removing that boundary. You say, well, when you're older, you'll be able to, you know, you get always parents telling kids that. And it's saying, no, you're a little child. It's so motivational that, you know, like a little child, no, you're important. It's so true. You know. And also, our girls who come online to our classes, Nahama is the lead educator and an amazing Judaic educator. The girls who come on, they don't know they're young. <laughs> they're smart and they participate and they engage and now they're writing, we're teaching them public speaking, yeah. we're teaching them leadership development, you know, it's it's really, it's these, these, these girls are the future leaders. Well, you know, I know, again, you have all over the world, but on the other hand, I know a few girls from the Capital District that do and they just tell me they're loving us. I said, where are you going to camp? You know, I try to always schmooze them with everybody. And where are you going? What are you doing? So, oh, we're going to go to JGU, you know, the uh, camp. And we love But for years, this is, you're 14, 15 years old. You've been five years. You know, a lot of times kids <laughs> three years say, oh, I had it. I've seen yep. camp already. You get that a little bit <laughs> with, with kids. And no, no, I'm going back. You know, I'm going to be a CIT, a counselor in training. I'm Yep. So in any case, listen, we're out of time. It was really, really important that you came on the show. And, uh, and I'm sure there are viewers also very inspired by everything that you're doing. And again, obviously, an invitation to connect with what you are doing. Uh, Nahum and Susan, thank you very much yes, for being on The Jewish for View us. and for doing what you are doing for the Jewish girls and Jewish women. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having us.